Uh, but let's start off with Sofian Amrabat, if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, all the reliable sources coming out and talking about this one this morning. Demazio saying uh, the discussions have only just started, but Tottenham is now an option for Sofian Amrabat. Fabrizio Romano saying Amrabat is on the Tottenham list. First contacts took place on Sunday. Talks ongoing. Deal also depends on Undombele loan to PSG. All parties involved are in talks. And Dan Kilpatrick says Spurs are in talks with Fiorentina over a low move for Safian Amrabat as Conte looks to boost his midfield options. So first of all, who is this Sofian Amrabat? He's a midfielder that plays for Fiorentina, or he's a midfielder that doesn't play for Fiorentina too much, <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, he's had one start this season, 10 sub-appearances. He's a defensive midfielder, a, a midfielder that um, in every season under Fiorentina has committed more fouls than tackles. Um, he's a player that when you're looking at the current squad, when you're looking at Hoybier, Winks, uh, Skip, I mean, I have never seen this guy play, but if he can't get into the Fiorentina side, how the hell is he going to get into the Spurs side? Unless we're saying that our centre mid options are worse than Fiorentina. Is how that what we're saying? Like our defensive mid. He's a defensive mid. We've already got Skip, Hoybier and potentially even Winks to fill that role. So why? I don't understand this at all. At all. Um, it's very, very peculiar why we're look looks like we're looking for a loan deal for, for, uh, for this guy. Obviously, I haven't seen too much of him. Um, but the f very fact he can't get into Fiorentina's side, not only that, but the very fact the profile of, of, of the player that he is, to me, doesn't seem like the kind of player that we need. Um, by all accounts, from, from what we've read, it seems like Conte is a fan of him. So maybe Conte is the one pushing this deal. And if that's, tr that's the truth, who are we to say that this isn't the guy for Tottenham? But for me, from what I thought the profile of player we needed... Um, from this window we didn't need another defensive midfielder we didn't need a player who's much more um, um more about uh, the defensive side of this game we needed someone who's very good on the ball passing wise ability wise someone who's able uh to get the passing move going he's able to pick out passes from deep or even in the final third so um i don't know i don't know about this deal i i, I put, out, put out a tweet asking um if there are any fiorentina fans who are able to um, tell us a bit more about him. And uh, I'll give you some of the responses. First of all, from Danny Kiriakou, the bun, see big up the bun. See if you're a Tina fan. He's not, but he, but he claims, uh, from what I've seen, this guy is like Stan Bouley. He's effing awful. We are done. And Conte walked to this guy. If we bring in this guy, you wait and see. Um, Na uh, Namdala. Um, says um, he was excellent at Verona, average first season at Fiorentina, very poor when he has played this season. The Verona version is a very good player. The final and Fiorentina version is certainly not as good as what we currently have. Um, the Wellman Sam says, depends on what you expect. He's really a CDM, very strong on the ball, not and not bad defensively, although a bit aggressive. He gets booked a lot has no creativity. At best, he might be a better CDM than we have, which may free up Winks to express himself. But that is being optimistic. Ollie Spencer says, I tried to watch most Fiorentina games, and I remember a few years ago, Amrabat being a very exciting, quite unique talent, but he never really kicked on and has stagnated and isn't a regular fixture under the Italiano. In a similar mould to Moussa Dembele, but nowhere near as good, quite average. Um, so no one has really uh, given me any sort of uh, positivity. Um, although uh, uh, Bardi from um, the Fighting Cock, or the yeah, he um, sorry the yeah the yeah he met, he sent us a, a link showing that um, showing Amrabat uh, uh, his performance against Gabon in the Afcon apparently was very good, and he says. This is why Morocco, he is Morocco's most trusted midfielder, playing with two wide number eights in the 4-1-2-1-2. He's covering for three Gabon players when the team is dispossessed, invaluable presence in midfield. Yeah. So I've had enough of hearing like these guys are, are their country's most trusted players. When we signed Vlad Ciriches, I heard that he was Romania's most trusted defender. So <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read too much into that one, you know what I mean? Mm. I guess so. That's all. That's that's kind of what we were. That's the inkling we're getting at the moment um, about this this signing. It doesn't excite me. Doesn't seem like the player I want really at Tottenham. Um, it doesn't, it just doesn't seem... make sense. It doesn't make sense why we're going for for this 
position. I mean, fine, central midfielder with a bit of creativity, but why a CDM? When yeah. When the, when the squad is packed to them. And we're getting rid of Ndombele Lissoso. And Delhi. And Delhi. And we're bringing in Amrabat. And so the, the update that we brought you yesterday from Ali Gold saying, uh, you know, selling these three players, um, it remains to be seen if we are going to bring in a creative midfielder. No, we're bringing in another central defensive midfielder. That's what we're so doing. If, if, if that happens, if all this happens, by the way, Fabrizio Romano said it's dependent on Ndombele leaving. So we're literally replacing our record signing with um, a Fiorentina bench warmer. Yeah. Um, that's if things go well. <laughs> um, that, I, like... Where is the quality coming from in midfield? Like at Inter Milan, he had the likes of Barella, you know? He had the likes of um, Ericsson there. He had, he had, he had proper he had Brozovic. He had proper quality there. We have Hoybier, Winks, Skip. They're, they're good players, but they don't have that kind of ability on the ball that, we, that we're, we're missing. And I thought that's what we we're going to be bringing in. But unfortunately, we're going for... He's, he, he seems like another... Very similar mould to what we already have in terms of profile of player. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm talking about. And let's just hope, let's just hope this is a smokescreen or something. Let's hope this isn't actually going to get over the line because I really don't see the point of this. I just don't see the point of it whatsoever. But let's be honest: if Conte wants him, then Conte wants him. I mean, who are we to to say that um, he won't be a good player for for the manager? But I just can't see this one working at all. And it stinks to me of Jetson Fernandez last uh, last January or two Januarys ago, whenever it was, just a panic buy, just a complete. Seems panic like Benjamin buy. Stambouli. Yeah, you know all these players that come in that you know they're not going to work. Stambouli, Jetson Fernandez, these central midfielders that just don't do anything for us. And I just feel like this is just going to be another one of them. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. And. Um, I guess it's only a loan deal. That's what's being mooted at the moment. So if it, it really doesn't work out. We can ship him out in uh, in the summer. Don't need to sign him. But uh, why, you know, f I just feel like, you know what it stinks of? We're, exactly. It stinks, we're, we're, it stinks of we're day 25 and got no one. That's what it stinks of, basically. It stinks of, uh, yeah, it's day 25. For 20 days, we've been... Um We've been doing absolutely nothing, haggling over two, three million with uh, with Wolves for Adama Traore. Still haven't put in the bid, which we we'll actually will get into in more detail in a minute. Still haven't put in the bid for Adama Traore. Now scrambling around for everything else that we need. S six days, six, seven days to go, however long it is. And um, and you're still talking about the same players that you were talking about at the beginning of the window, of getting out Ndombele, uh, Deli Ali, all these players, um, and, and no movement whatsoever. The There's fact, been no movement. The fact of the matter is, right, this guy, how, you, how many games he started for Fiorentina? One game One. this season, right? And made 10 sub appearances. Do you really think if we were, we really wanted this guy, say this guy was on our list from the beginning, right? Well, this is a guy we were wanted from the beginning of the window. We couldn't got this done early. Stinks, you know what it stinks of as well? Nuno. The Nuno deal, the way they had that all planned out, you know what I mean? It's just like panic, 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 panic. But like the, this guy's been available the whole window as well. There's no, there's the only reason we're going for him now is because we're panicking, yeah. And we haven't because we, we've we've got nothing. Yeah. We 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 don't know what we're doing, and and I, it's so frustrating. Again, I really thought Conte's here, Paratigi's here. We can get some good movement, and I know January is more difficult than other windows, but there is quality to be had there. In, um, and I'm sorry, we don't have to resort to uh, panicking and getting a, 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 p a player who can't get a game for Fiorentina into our team. Yeah, there were the rumours over the last couple of days um, about two specific players who I would love both of them at the club in Frank Kessie. Uh, the rumours were that we've agreed a deal with AC Milan, but he and his agents don't want to move until the end of the window, which is completely fair enough when you're looking at it from uh, Frank Kessie's uh, lenses. And um, Gigi Wijnaldum as well. Uh, the rumours yesterday about Gigi Wijnaldum is that there's been no talks about him coming to Spurs. And even so, he wants to stay at PSG for the for the rest of the season anyway. Yeah, I would rather, or I guess Paredes apparently rejected us, but I'd definitely rather Paredes than him, than Amrabat. But I'm sure across Europe, there must be better, better options than him. You would think so, wouldn't you? That we can get in this window. You would think so. And but I guess if this is the profile of player he wants, then what can we what can we say? But I just but why is this the profile of player he wants? It just doesn't make sense to me. Don't know. Does it make sense to you? Like no. when we've got Hoybier, Skip, and Winks. Yeah, you'd think they that they cover 
kind of the more defensive options and we can get a more talented and more um a more player with more ability on the ball someone like a ruben neves or something like that obviously i'm not saying we shine him now but i mean i would i mean i would i would love ruben neves now i'm not saying i don't think that's possible now but something on someone of that kind of a bit that kind of mold and it seems like when that's not what we're interested in i don't know it's very confusing and this is what i've been saying as much as Indombele, Lo Celso and Delhi haven't worked out and fair enough I don't mind us moving him on but we have to get some sort of quality in this squad otherwise we're, it's gonna, we're going to be way too easy to play against. Yeah.